Hey, everybody, this is John Scott, former NHL player, trying something new today. I'm doing a podcast, the first one of my life. Why not give it a shot? Number two. Okay, here we go. So I'm here with my buddy, John. He's the one who's kind of helping me with this. And he said, you know what we should talk about for the next podcast? Fights. And I said, John, what? Why? And he said, because people love violence. And I said, all right, let's do it. So we're going to talk about fights today. I've been in a few I've watched a lot of fights. I enjoy fighting when I'm in the act. I don't enjoy the build up to a fight. Let's start there, I guess. Let's just say I'm going into Anaheim when I was playing and George Peros is on the on the schedule. I notice we're playing Anaheim probably you well, right when I this schedule comes out at the beginning of the season, I, I check to see who we're playing and I know when I'm gonna fight a lot and when I'm not. So I know a week before I'm going to play George and we fight a lot. So I know we're probably going to fight in that game. And I start getting nervous probably about two or three days before the game. I start watching all of his fights. I try to see how he grabs on. I see if he throws a left jab first. I see if he throws a punch right away or likes to just grab on and get his grip. I just see everything I try to see and I try to learn, excuse me, what he does before the fight. And I'm sure he does the same for me, but it just, um, it was my way of kind of preparing for a fight. And I know a lot of guys don't like to watch video. A lot of guys, whatever. I probably have told guys I don't watch video because I don't want to seem like I'm scared, but no, I would research every guy I went and fought just because I don't know, you'd be stupid not to, it's there. Why not just do it? So the night before the game, I would probably get about two, three hours sleep. I'd be a nervous wreck, especially if it was a guy I never fought before. If it was a big guy, like I never got to fight McIntyre, but we never really played against each other. But if I was going to play against him, I'd be a nervous wreck. Or a guy like Brian McGratton, or um, there's a number of guys who, you know, are just killers. And you just get nervous. And I've talked to them and they, you know, feel the same way. And it's just, it's not natural to go in and fight somebody who wants to, you know, knock your face off. So the night before, I probably get two, three hours of sleep. I'm just kind of tossing and turning, thinking about, the fight. That's it. You're not thinking about the game. You're not thinking about prepping. You're not thinking about anything else. You're thinking about this guy trying to, you know, punch a hole in your face, which is not a fun sight. You don't want that to happen. So it's, you know, it, it fucks with your head a little bit. So that's the the night before. And then the day of is you try to go through your usual routine. You try to stick to what you've done every game prior to that. So you wake up, you have breakfast. I usually just went to Starbucks, grabbed, you know, a tea and a muffin, nothing too heavy go to the rink, get a quick skate in, you know, just do your random things, tape your sticks, make sure your equipment's ready, go back, have a meal. Mine was always chicken pasta, some veggies, never really did ice cream, but just kind of fill up. And you're supposed to go back for your pregame nap. And this is where guys, you know, they take an hour, 45 minutes, two hours. I was always an hour and a half, two hour kind of guy. But again, if you know you're going to fight somebody that night, you're you get a little nervous, you know, you, you can't quite relax. And then you're laying there and then you say, fuck it. Okay. Get the computer, start watching videos again. You, you're just to kind of just completely one track mind. You just want to get as much things. And it's the worst if the videos you're watching, he's just absolutely murdering people. So it's like, Oh, well, you just beat up this guy and that guy and that guy. And it's like, Oh no. Okay. So you try not to like click on the video that says George Peros, a hundred percent. You kind of look for ones that are like, okay, he lost this one. What did that guy do? So that's what I did before the game. You head to the rink. You, you try to, again, stay in your same routine. You, I always like to play soccer. I like to tape my sticks. And then I kind of like, I honestly did a crossword. I went and talked to the trainers And I tried to do that as best as I could, but sometimes if you're too nervous, you just kind of sit in your stall and just kind of prep and just get your head wrapped around what's going to happen. And then you do warm-ups. And 
you see him across the ice and you're like, I, I was always a guy where I didn't like to lock eyes. I just kind of like to do my own thing. Cause I always felt if I always looked in their end and their guy wasn't paying attention to me, it, well, I would just assume that this guy like is not nervous at all. Like he couldn't care if I was on the rink, but if I looked down and I saw him staring at me, I knew that he was nervous and he was just wondering where I'm at, what I'm going to do. So I wouldn't look down at there and I would glance every once in a while, but that's the extent of it. And so, you know, you go back in the locker room and being a fourth liner, being a fighter, you're never sure if you're in the game or not. So the coach will come in and write up the lines and you're sitting there watching and they do the, you know, first line, second line, third line. Then they come to the fourth line and you're waiting. You're like, okay, he's a left winger. He's going to write his name first. And you're kind of, you're peeking around shoulders. You're trying to see, oh, is he, is he, is it a P or is it a T? Is it, is it perils? Are they going to start, you know, Nate Thompson there? It's like, okay, oh ah, shit, it's perils. So he's playing. And then that's when the nerves kick in. You're, you're legit. Your, your kind of stomach gets a little funny. Your palms start sweating and you're just like, okay, here we go. Like, let's do this. And I, would just stew and I wouldn't talk to anybody. Usually I'm kind of chit chatty, happy go lucky, you know, joking around. If I was playing a team where I know I could just beat the guy up or I wasn't nervous about it. But if it was a guy again, who I was unsure of, I would just be completely silent. My face probably looked like I, you know, just jumped out of a glass of milk cause it was so white. And I probably just like, I was going to barf. So you go on the ice, do the anthems, this and that being a fourth liner, you go up fourth, and this is the worst is when first shift goes, second shift goes, and I'm gearing up because I always like to get my fights out of the way. I hated to wait. I hated to just kind of almost hold myself hostage where I was like, okay, you have to do this thing, but you're not going to do it yet. And so I wanted to just get it out of the way so I can just get on with the game and start playing. But the worst is when it's like, okay, first shift, second shift, penalty. It's like, shit. So you got to wait that two minutes, and then the line's kind of – start again where it's like okay for so sometimes I didn't get on the ice until like six or seven minutes had passed and then maybe then I'm not even going up against you know their fourth line so it's just funny how a lot of the times you have this plan in place and then it doesn't go down and then you're just kind of you're just caught in this gray area where it's like I want to fight this guy I'm all geared up to do it I was all jacked up and my adrenaline's pumping and now I'm not there anymore and then I'm on the ice. The next thing I know, someone's tapped me on the pants saying, let's go. And I wasn't quite ready. And you're just like, okay, here we go. And you just kind of get fired up again. And that's, and then it's out of the way, but then you fight. And usually I won. I won, I'd say a majority of my fights, which were good. And then once it's over, it feels like the biggest, like weight is lifted off your chest. You're like, okay, fine. Like I, no one died. You know, you survived. You, 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 won the fight and you feel like a fucking superstar, a rock star. You're like, yes, I'm the man. I can do whatever I want. And it was awesome. So I don't know. That's just how I dealt with it. I, I wanted to get out of the way as quick as I can. And a lot of guys aren't like that. It's funny. I was talking to Brad May this past weekend. We were doing a, a kind of a charity thing. And he said when he knew he was going to fight, he liked to wait as long as possible. So he would like wait to the second, you know, third period. And I would I was like, how could you do that? I'm like to yourself. And he's like, I don't know. That's just how I like to do it. And I was like, you're crazy. Cause I, I, I had to get out of the way as quick as possible. The music. It's funny. I, I went through stages when I first started fighting, I was a big like corn and limp biscuit and like all these like heavy metal bands. Like, um, God, who's that band that I, anyways, some other guy. And I would just get all gunned up and like almost crazy. But then as I got older, I started to like just listen to tragically hip and try to calm myself down because I would be so like, like fucking like out of it or I couldn't even focus on anything else. I'd be like, Oh, I want to to fight. I want to get over with. So I had to calm myself, calm myself down a little bit. So I listened to tragically hip and like third eye blind and like all these lame, not lame bands, but like more calmer bands that I usually listen to when I drink beer. Yeah. I have a funny story though about I brought up Brad May. I was like, okay, another tough guy. I was chatting with George LaRock earlier this year, and I, I always thought of George as like the biggest killer. You know, he's this big fucking monster. Like he's six four, two hundred and sixty pounds, and he just murders guys. And he was telling me how he would so before the games, you do your pregame skate and the guys who aren't playing, they bag skate. And so the assistant coaches will watch those skates and they can kind of work their lineup around who they think is bag skating. 
So if George knew he was in the lineup, he would stay afterwards and skate by himself. So the other team's coaches would assume that he wasn't playing. So they would bag skate their tough guy. So their tough guy wouldn't play that night. And George kind of worked it like that where he would just, you know, skate for five, 10 minutes, just enough to make it seem like he wasn't playing. So the other team, Oh, we're not going to dress John Scott tonight. Cause you know, George is bag skating. So George isn't going to play. So we don't need John. And then George would come to the rink and I would still be at home, you know, in my underwear watching TV, I wouldn't even go to the rink until like game time. And he would just play the game and I wouldn't play and he would love it. Um, there was a few guys who I didn't want. I wanted to fight who I never fought. Brian McGratton was one. He was a big, tough guy. I asked him, you know, a couple of times. It just never worked out because he was one of the tougher guys during my time. Um, there was a couple of little pests who I wanted to fight. Like my, I played with him in Buffalo, Pat Coletta. I um, always wanted to fight him just because he was a little weasel when I played against him. And one time I asked him, I was like, let's go. He's like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And I dropped my gloves and he just kind of skated away. And I felt like <laughs> no. a, such an asshole. So, no, he was one and McGrath just because he's a tough son of a gun. So those are two guys. I only lost, I think, I lost two in my career that I really like can look at and see, you know, you lost that one. I got knocked out, not knocked out, but knocked down by Justin Johnson. And you feel a little embarrassed. Like it's, it's like, I should win that fight. I had no idea who this kid was. He came straight from the AHL tough kid, but I never knew he was a lefty and he caught me with a good left. And I, I kind of, I was just smiling on the way to the box. I was like, yeah, I'm like, good one, man. Like you caught me. I didn't expect it. And, and you feel embarrassed. Like it's after the game. It's like, shit. Like I, you know, I should have beat that kid up. And then Colt Nor, he punched me in the stomach and he, I lost my breath. You know, when you like hit in the stomach and you can't breathe. Yeah. And so he caught me in the stomach and I was like, Ugh! and I couldn't breathe. And so I dropped to my knees and I was like, come on. And so I asked him to fight a bunch after that, but he never, he never, he always let Frazier McLaren fight me, which was kind of, kind of lame, but whatever. So you feel embarrassed. Like that's your job. You know, I want to be the baddest, you know, ombre on the block. And so it's funny. I, now that I'm out of hockey, I don't really talk to many of them anymore. But I think when I was playing, I had a good relationship with all of them. They all seemed like good guys. And you'd meet them along the way. Like I fought Cam Jansen a bunch and George Peros and all these guys, Kevin Westgarth. And like I beat up all of them. And then you see them, you know, you know, for a beer afterwards or this and that. And they're all cool guys. And it's just a job. But for the most part, there's just some. Like Tom Sestito is a big piece of shit. And – I don't like that guy and I've heard nothing but shitty things about him. So he's the one guy who I fucking don't like. And I would like to fight him again. He jumped me from behind one time cause I hit one of his players and he jumped me and I, I won the fight, but I wanted to fight him again. Every time I would ask him to fight, he's like, Oh, my hands broke. Oh, I can't do it. Coach won't let me fight. And then he fights somebody else on my team. So I have no respect for that guy. I think he's a fucking anyways, <laughs> whatever. So no, most of the guys are cool though. Most of the guys are like, Awesome guys. Like me, I'm super awesome. Super awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, you were talking about UFC fighters before I did yeah. this. We were talking about ideas or even current fighters in the league. Anyways, we'll start with UFC fighters. John asked me if a hockey player, how he would do in the UFC. And I told him that we would get absolutely pumped because UFC fighters are a different breed. And it's a little different when someone's trying to punch you versus someone trying to like break your arm or choke you out or kick you in the face, or it's just a whole nother level that they're at. So I don't think we could survive, but they, then they couldn't survive on the ice. Not a chance. I could take the heavyweight champ of the UFC, get him on the ice. I'd let him skate. He could learn how to skate for a year. And I was still fucking mop floor with that guy without a doubt, like without a doubt in my mind, it would it'd be, wouldn't even be a contest. So there's just different, uh, you know, there's different arenas, so to speak. Anyways. So, okay. What else? Current fighters. I'll, I'll leave it with that. The guys who I think are the best fighters in the league. Um, it's tough. You know, fighting has changed. There's not the, the, I guess the, the, the scariest guy out there is Ryan Reeves, but, I think he's an honest fighter. I think he's super strong. And I think his strength is kind of what makes him a boring fighter these days, just because, and the same thing happened with LaRock because they were so strong where they would throw a punch and they wouldn't connect, but everyone would fall down after that. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's just because he's so strong, but it's a super boring fight to watch 
because he throws one or two big punches and none of them connect and everyone falls to the ice and everyone's like, Oh my goodness, Ryan Reeves won the fight. He's such a killer, but like he hasn't punched anyone in the face for probably a year and a half. So I like the guy. I think he's an awesome fighter. I fought him once. We never really got going again. We fell down and I think he's the toughest guy in the league right now. I don't think anybody wants to mess with him, but I, I just wish he would maybe take a little bit off his punches and focus a little more on trying to connect because I don't know when I was playing, I went for quantity, not quality or no, excuse me, quality, not quantity. I, I didn't throw a hundred punches. I tried to throw 10 and try to land seven. I, I wasn't the kind of guy who did a lot of punches for show and punch air and punch shoulder pads and punch helmets. I thought that was kind of stupid. So I don't know if you watch my fights, uh, I, I tend to throw less just so I can maybe try to hit more. Anyways, you know, there's Ryan Reeves and Matt Martin's always game. He's a scrapper and Michael Haley's a, a fucking warrior. He's, he was in San Jose for a while. He was in the Island for a while. He's in Florida now. He's, he's getting some good minutes and he's scrapping. I like watching him scrap. And obviously Cody McLeod's been around. I, I think I fought him. I can't remember. But yeah, those guys are probably the, the guys who are, you know, the last tough guys in the league. Then you get into the kind of the, the guys who can scrap but are good players. And, you know, the Wayne Simmons from Philly, he's a tough kid. Even Kevin Bieksa, he's just been knocking guys out this year. Super fun guy to watch the fight. He enjoys getting punched in the face, and he likes punching guys in the face. And that's, I think, what a fight's all about. So the best thing I've seen in years is when he knocked out Radko Gudis because Gudis, again, is a piece of garbage, and he deserved every, every inch of that fist in the face. So it worked out well for everyone. But anyways, yeah, so those are the fighters I like. John asked how my wife felt about me fighting. And she honestly was a, wasn't too worried. She was very indifferent. She knew it was my job, and she was just confident in my ability, you can say. Like, I'd never really been beat up that bad. And, you know, the fights that I did lose, I never really, you know, I didn't get concussed. I didn't get knocked out. It was just, excuse me, it was just like a punch. So, you know, she wasn't too worried about it. I'm, you know, I'm not exactly a small guy. And I think she sees me and she's like, listen, you can beat the fuck out of all these guys. Like, don't worry about it. And she said that to me all the time because I used to go in a fight stressed out. I would be up the night before. I'd be worried. And she'd be like, what is going on? Like, relax. And I'm like, oh, oh I got to fight somebody tomorrow. And she's like, how big is this guy? Like, why are you so worried? And I go, oh, I'm like, I don't know. He's like 6'2", 225 pounds. And she's like, are you fucking nuts? She's like, go go look in the mirror. How big are you? And I'm like, I don't know, six, six, seven to 65. And she's like, Hey, dummy. Like, huh, you think they're not worried about you? And I kind of, I was like, okay, yeah, you're probably right. So I guess I am pretty big. So yeah, no, she's fine with it. Cause I, I you know, I'm good. I, I was good at what I did. That's it. Podcast two, I think is over. Okay.